Bordering Alaska and the Arctic Ocean, the Yukon Territory in northern Canada is wild, sparsely populated and unrelenting. It's just snow and mountains and forest, as far as the eye can see. This year marks 125 years since one of the most frantic gold rushes in history reached its peak. When gold was discovered here, over 100,000 prospectors traveled north hoping to get lucky, but the extreme conditions caused many to turn back. Many of those who did make it settled here in Dawson City, building a new life for themselves and their families, whilst First Nations people who had lived here for generations had to move upriver in an effort to protect their way of life. So the population of this town exploded from 1,500 to 30,000 people during the three-year rush. Roughly $29 million worth of gold was pulled from the ground around here during the three-year rush, but only a few made their fortune. Many who missed out found other reasons to stay, like Bonnie's grandfather. A local legend, Percy the Wolf risked his life delivering mail along the Yukon River. His commitment to providing a lifeline between isolated communities in this frozen wilderness earned him the title Iron Man of the North. To honor him, the town now hosts an annual dog sledding race. The grueling route follows Percy's 210-mile mail trail from Dawson City across the border into the American state of Alaska. He was that type of a person. If he could come across Canada for the gold rush, he could do anything. <laughs> there are dogs everywhere as the town gears up for tomorrow's race. What kinds of things are you checking for? Um, a little bit of everything, just kind of your standard like physical exam on a dog. Make sure that you don't have any signs of infection or like any wounds or anything, but mainly because they're going to be running for hundreds of miles. But it's not just the dogs that are at risk. Traveling through the night in unpredictable weather conditions means the race can very quickly turn deadly. Two weeks ago tonight, we had a major blizzard event. It could be 30 below, so you know, just prepare for that right now. Sounds really intense. The river was particularly high this year, and so the ice on the trail is worse than it's been in a hundred years. As the temperature drops, the competitors make their final preparations for tomorrow's brutal endeavor. You're used to it after you've done it many times. You know, you're used to going without sleep. You're, you're getting better at the cold. You're, you know, you're better at dog care when it's 40 below. You learn all those things. Uh, it's just an incredible feeling. Yeah. Yeah, hanging out with your best friends. How do the dogs feel about dog sledding? They're driven. They, they do it quite easily, much mm -hmm. easier than us. We're definitely the weak link. <laughs> Back in town, there's one more tradition that's an important part of the race. Part of what we do to commemorate Percy's life is to actually send mail. Mm -hmm. And so people actually have letters. We actually deliver them legally to the post office. You do? Oh yeah, and they put them in a package and we send them with the first musher to leave the starting line. Oh my gosh. So I'm just gonna steal a moment and write this letter. Right here, in front of Percy himself. Right. In the spirit of Percy, keep on adventuring. Love, The Travel Show, BBC. It's the morning of the race and the mushers are all starting to roll in. There's definitely a buzz in the air right now, but it's also absolutely freezing out here. The morning of the race has finally arrived. As the minutes count down, the tension is rising. This morning I was feeling quite nervous. Yeah? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> but uh, I think it'll be great once we're actually out on the trail. We've got all the dog food, mandatory gear, so axe, uh, fuel, cooker, and a minus 40 sleeping bag, snowshoes. Whenever I'm out on the trail, I do always imagine what it would have been like 
back in the day. And I would imagine that also it. picturing someone who actually had to do this every single week. No fail. I had no idea. It was a yeah. loop like that. Yeah. Eight days, getting people's mail. I'd be like pregnant women into town by know, dog right? sled. That's pretty cool. Also, a thank you to the city of Dawson and the Trundequichin for sponsoring the Percy DeWolf race. The bag of mail with my letter in it is handed over. Competing in these races today is a testament of the resilience needed to live in these conditions. Percy's spirit definitely lives on here in the north, and long may it continue to. The mushers could be out there for up to 48 hours, which is more than me and the crew could handle. But Ayana has provided us with a little insight into just what it was like. It's so peaceful out here and it's snowing. It's not quite a whiteout. It's not snowing that hard, but yeah, it's kind of eerie in a sense. It's very peaceful. I've heard a few ravens calling, but mainly just the pitter patter of the dog feet. And the results are in. The winner of this year's Percy the Wolf race was our friend Michelle, completing it in an impressive 19 and a half hours. Ayana came third, gliding into town around four hours later. A little worse for wear, but looking surprisingly cheery. Yeah.